Working now. It's time for Two Birds and One Stoner with me, Mr. Trey. That feel-good show to get you going. I woke up so motivated, so motivated. I can't even lie. Can't lie. I've been stressing lately. We're not in a position where we should agree. This isn't an easy subject, and that's okay around here. You see, I got all my game from the streets of California. Young nigga. I'm not questioning anybody's intelligence. I think we're past that. I'm now questioning the ethics of the situation. So what we spoke me. Just having fun. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I had to hang up on that guy. He just said he used weed that wasn't decarboxylated to cook. I can't do you today. Yeah, my mind, they said. You could ask yourself an insane question. What if I'm not on any side and I just want the truth? His gift is a curse. Forget the earth. He's got the earth to pull his dick from the dirt and fuck the whole universe. I'm not afraid. Hey, maybe we can have a debate over what successful is, but I can tell you one thing. I know I was meant to do this, and no one's going to argue that. He said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Be successful. America. I'm Blue Urge. I'm there for leadership. It's on me. Uh, and of course, it is a beautiful episode of Two Birds and One Stoner. I'm your boy, Mr. Trey. And it's another episode with Two Birds and One Stoner. Today, what do we have for you on this show today? Well, we've got Bill's Kicker accused of gang rape. But is it what it appears? Is our rude story. And then our, uh, shall we say, partaking story, if you would, our partaking story, our partaking story today is true. What's the big deal? Because that is a question that we've been asking for a long time. What is the big deal with shrooms? Why are people bugging on it? We've also got guests lined up for you for today's show. We have a good time. We have some fun. Um, I'm a guest. I mean, we're all a guest here. I mean, I'm a material girl in a material world, so definitely a guest on the show. I feel like that. That lines up for me. Um, really excited to have my boy Chris in, coming into the show here in a second. We'll get Chris in here live. Um, <clears throat> want to remind you guys, don't forget to check out things like Newbie and the Doobie. We love us some Newbie and the Doobie. We love that Newbie and the Doobie um, right here on Wake and Make America Radio. Don't forget that you can check out all of our shenanigans, okay, and our Newbie and the Doobie because, you know, you want them too. Out of Canada, by the way. Great show out of Canada. Don't forget about Newbie and the Newbie. Check them out. They're coming to you live out of Canada, baby. Um, Keep in mind that Newbie and the Newbie, great show, great, great show. Um, Keep in mind that uh, we got Chris Watkins, who's going to be joining the show soon. He's coming up with the High Tide Stick um, and or otherwise. We've got Moonlight Convo getting in the convo here. And then, of course, Blunt Football Talk returns this fall. Although, I think we might have to come back and do another little tidbit show. I was thinking about getting the boys together next week and talking you know, NFL schedules. But before we could ever even talk about the future, let's go to the past. And how do we go to the past? Well, we bring in our personal blast from the past. That's right, Chris Watkins. We're going to bring old Chrissy Poo in. So um, let me get him in here now. Uh, what, let me see if I can. Uh, yep, I think I got him in here. Chris, welcome to the show. How are you doing, buddy? What's going on, bro? Um, well, I'm just worried and concerned. Just <laughs> living my best life. Right. Worried about people not doing right. You know how it goes. For sure. Getting stoned. I'm definitely getting stoned. Always okay. got a blaze. So, matter of fact, before we get to... Wait, no, don't boo me. Don't boo me. What did yeah. I do to learn that? Oh, it was just an inadvertent boo? Oh, okay. I can accept an inadvertent... The producers are telling me it was just an inadvertent boo. Nobody actually meant to boo me. And so since no one actually meant to do it, I'm not as mad at you. I roll. If you meant to do it, though, you want to see these hands? Because I'm, I'm too old to be throwing them now, I guess. Um, according to my kids. Uh, no, seriously. Um, don't forget, though, guys, there's another show, live taping, coming up next after this show, or you can catch it when it airs later on down the road. Getting old. Retirement to taxes. Everything's changing. And, of course, getting that outdoor in the ground where, Chris, I know you're going to be part of that show. You have to be part of that show. It's a grow show. Oh, and yeah. We have, having adult, uh, we have a third show coming up 
uh, for Memorial Day weekend, uh, we've got having adult stoner kids be like, and social media breaks, should we social engineer them? <laughs> Just using big words that piss people off. You love, you love how I do that? Uh-huh. Nobody wants to hear the word social engineering in the morning. Trey, there's a word he uses. Social engineering. <laughs> you're going to gonna hurt all these stoners' brains. I hurt my brains quite often. Oh, wait, hold on. Remember the minute and 30 timer I have to have for when I'm dabbing on air? Yeah. Uh, uh, I need that because I have no way of key. Uh, we should probably set it for a minute and 15 because I talk too much. How do you do that, though? That becomes the question. A minute? Oh, oh, you have to request it in the phone. Okay, well, well uh, a minute and 15. You know, I feel like it's just going to pull me up a minute timer and I'm still going to have to adjust. That's actually exactly what it did. So much for modern technology. You know, just when you need it. <laughs> that's something you don't want it to do um, and then you have to be stuck with it right <laughs> that damn AI <laughs> yo <laughs> Alan Iverson is going to pay one day for all of this no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but one of my buddies was like you're not really trying to like Alan Iverson shame the whole situation and I was like I'm definitely doing that it's what I do I blame somebody who it's not their fault and then see how it goes for me sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't according to of course, my friends and you know spouse, it never works out for me, but we don't need to talk about that. I mean, do we really have to? Uh, so, Chris, let's get right to it first off and foremost. Um, obviously, I'm wearing a Bills jersey today, not in support of Bills kicker uh, Matt Azaru, Azara, Azarai. I think I said it right. Um, also known as the punt god. After winning, I mean, every punter award you could win in college, being drafted in the sixth round by the Buffalo Bills, and even registering an 84-yard punt in the preseason before getting um, cut by the team over a gang rape allegation of a underaged woman. Yeah, you know, that's the crazy thing, you know. These young kids need to realize that, I mean, it's cool coming up all famous and you know, killing it in the game, but you, your past and shit can come back to haunt you with a quickness. Oh, yeah. I always say there's at least one person going to pop up on Ancestry and be my kid. It's just, it's bound to happen. <laughs> know me, you know why that's funny and yet tragic at the same time. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you went out and partied with me and like 30 women, you know why this happens. <laughs> yeah, why been there. Shh. <laughs> We don't talk about that summer one time. <laughs> All we do is just <laughs> that we had fun and we let it go. Yeah, yeah buddy. And then we do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, some, uh, some, some of it anyways. I can't repeat everything I do in life, but some, some of it you can't repeat for obviously reasons and other things you repeat because, well, you have to. <laughs> right? I mean, it's that damn fun. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Yeah. So um, I do want to throw out a little love here. Uh, I do want to remind you guys, don't forget, you can listen to the shows live recorded when they air live, or you can take an opportunity out there to join the show um, with a recorded live, or you can listen to the show anytime. Just look up wake dash and dash bake America show on your favorite podcast servers. Hook yourself up, player. And we got, oh, we got Scotty from Moonlight Combos checking in. Love it. Um, we'll have to probably add him up, get him up in here on the combo too, because I think he can add a lot of insight being from, you know, I think he's a perfect guest for this, this topic specifically. Um, I'll invite him in um, because I think that when we, when we think about Scotty, uh, Chris, and, and I'm going to get him in here just any second is Scotty definitely is a speaking vo- voice and mind. Um, oh man, I hit a, oh man, I hit a, I, I warmed up the torch. I warmed up the, the rig and never actually started the timer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Richard, can't, can't, can't blame AI for that one. Oh, I want to blame AI for that. AI for that one. Let's get Scotty in here. Scotty, like I said, could be a very formidable asset to this conversation about Matt Azaras, Azaraki, or Azar- AI Azar- was Carlos. a very good basketball player. Great basketball player for uh, Philly, and I'm, I'm tired of everybody blaming him blame for, for every- the problems in the world. I feel like I blamed him today, though. It's not AI's fault. That's all I'm saying. AI <laughs> do our, helps me do my work at work. I mean, AI makes me look smart, so I never bitch about it. The basketball player? That's weird, bro. Yeah, Allen Iverson makes me look smart, man. I bought those uh, answers 
threes and the question ones, people never questioned me or answered me again. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I really did own the uh, the answer threes though. The one that had like the clear blue tips on the on the uh, the clear blue tip on the front of the shoe. It was like a clear blue color. The sole, remember? That's the ones I had. I think they were the answer two or answer three. I don't. Really, they were the third one, so I think they were the answer two, which would have been the third shoe. No, because it's question answer question answer, so it'd have been the fourth shoe. Anyway, um. Let's start that timer this time. <laughs> so, Scotty, all jokes aside, I really look at, at you as a, a very reputable, formidable asset to anything we talk about, but especially sports, because this is a subject in a kid that we covered when he got cut last year. Did we lose him? I think we lost Scotty. As I start having a conversation with the guy, he just leaves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, he's here. He sounds like an old man having a heart attack, but he's here. <laughs> Trying to breathe. Good blunt. Good blunt. Oh, okay. So anyway, so you remember the Bills punter in terms <laughs> of gang raping with a group of other players and pers- and people not related to the team at a at an off campus party um, in 2021 that led to a lawsuit that eventually um, got him, you know. <laughs> kicked off of the bills the bills were just like we're just going to get away from this and this whole situation until it's settled you know or whatever now keep in mind though the bills do have so i don't think they retain rights to him because they released him there's a difference right so because he didn't leave by choice i don't believe that the bills um have the rights to him but he can still come back to the nfl but this is where we get to with false accusations is where, where does how does this kid move on now Exactly, exactly. That's my thought. So not only, you know, has his time been wasted, money been wasted, uh, he's lost out on money. So how, so how do, how do you, you know, how do you go about that part and, and compensating somebody for, for something like that? You know, you and that, and that's a what a lot of people don't right. think about when, when these Sorry. type of accusations come up. Yeah, throw some out. He hasn't really made any money. He might have gotten dicked out of even his signing bonus at this point. Right. Ooh. He's a young, young career. Uh and, you and, and and it really could have affected his entire out. career. You know, he was a draftee, which means he's got a guaranteed salary, and he lost a year of that guaranteed salary because he was drafted. You know, when you're drafted, you got a signing bonus. It may be shit in the sixth round, but you'll get one. You know what I mean? These are things that he probably lost because remember that you're, you, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you might, it depends on your, your, your contract, but you, you know, like I told you guys, I've worked around contracts for quite a bit of part of my life and even seen some NFL ones, you know? And um, one of the things I, I'll tell you that I've, I've picked up on with NFL contracts is that a lot of the money doesn't pay until you start really playing. Right. You guys show up to that first game. Why does your signing bonus? A lot of that money don't pay until you play so because he was cut during training camp did he ever play a down a a what we'd call a a chargeable down to his salary no that's where i'm stuck how's this kid gonna now now guys i'm probably remiss if i don't bring this up scott and chris that that he still faces the civil lawsuit right um i think that this this civil lawsuit's got a tough run to go on it because they're like, well, I can't find a cooperating alibi for for him as the defense, so they're going to pursue a civil case, right? But the the thing is, or I mean, the the the, the accusers, lawyers. But my thing is, is that prosecutors declined to take up this case because not only did his teammates say that he wasn't even there, these are people that are accused of this crime. Also, say he wasn't even the one there. So. How do we move forward from that, that there's still someone pursuing a civil case against him, much like the Deshaun Watson thing where nothing rises to the level of a criminality. But in this case, the DA, dude, I read over the story in the Times and I also read over Adam Schiffner. You guys, uh, you don't know this, Chris. Well, maybe you do. You watch the Run Football Talk show enough. But Shefty is God on that show. We all listen to Shefty. Shefty does not post until Shefty has it right. I mean, Scotty, you know that. I know that. Podcast P knows that. Half of America that watches the NFL know. 
I didn't mute Scott, so Scott had to unmute himself. <laughs> but uh, half of America, they all know that that um, Adam Scheffner gets it right, right? So I waited until, even though I saw other stories behind this, you know, and other stuff, I waited until Shefty said it. And then when Shefty said it, I screenshotted it because I think it's prudence to the situation. But let me give you the story, some information out of the Times. So the prosecutor, this is the quote, ultimately prosecutors determined it is clear the evidence does not support the filing of criminal charges and there is no path to a potential criminal conviction. A statement released back in December, right, by the prosecutor's office. So the prosecutor would say that prosecutors can only file charges when they are ethically believed that they that there can be something proven without a reasonable doubt. The problem is, is that he's accused of knowing this girl was under 18, and he's going, even if I banged her, I wouldn't have known she was under 18, first off. And then his second defense is using evidence from people's phones at that party, video evidence at that party. No one can show that man in a video when this instance was going down or when it took place or whatever. So you have corroborating evidence from the accuser, or the people that are even accused that are like, nah, man, like, I'm not even saying I did this, but that dude wasn't here, right? Then you have um, the, the lawyers demanding corroborating evidence, right? Um, that, that shows where he went. But I would say that you don't have to supply an alibi at that point. I mean, do you? Because you have your alibi provided by the other suspects that you weren't even there. They may go down for this shit. There are some of them that there is known that they had sex with this girl. <clears throat> and there was a group event. I'm not going to call it. Group hey, right? Wait, well, because, dude, <laughs> man, have you ever been to college parties? Like shit oh. goes down in the DM that is completely yeah. on the up, dog. <laughs> I mean, MSU is like my neighbor. <laughs> Okay, fair. So you you get my point is like shit goes down in the DM at colleges. Oh, yeah, where, for sure. And then, and then there's the other half of this where shit goes down in the uh-oh because <laughs> there is stuff wrongful that goes on at colleges all the time. Okay? <laughs> so I'm a bit particular, if you would, right? Because I think that when you don't have anyone – they can say this dude was even at the party in the time frame that the crime took place, the alleged incident or crime, right? So you need crime, you need motive, opportunity, and you usually need like a body, a witness, something, right? So the problem is you got one witness saying that he was there, but you got every other witness, even accused witnesses, who I just don't think would cover for him and go down for a rape charge for someone. I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't. Oh, no yeah, hell no. I'm going to prison or jail for a rape charge or accusation that I fell on for my buddy. It ain't happening. I don't yeah, work, yeah. I don't have a buddy that close. That's my quote you, of the day. You would definitely think that if there's more people saying he wasn't even there, that they would just back away from the allegations. Well, and I think that's why there hasn't been any charges is the investigation has led to that point where, you know, <clears throat> ultimately – the evidence doesn't support the accusation. And, you know, could this could this girl be confusing him with somebody else at the party? It's very possible. Um, I'm not going to sit there and try to tell you that what happened to this girl didn't happen to this girl. I don't believe that for a second, nor do I believe it for a second. I don't know either way, right? What I do know is, is that there is evidence to support that maybe something happened because... Um, and, uh, you know, we're not a very like, um, pleasant show. Like, we just fucking say shit, right? right. So, nope. but if you're one of those parents that doesn't mind us saying fucking shit and all that while your kid's in the car, cool. But this is one you might want to, like, like pull the phone out of the, out, of the, out of the Bluetooth and put it up to your ear for this one. Um, fair warning. What I'm about to read to you is graphic and disturbing and could be upsetting to audiences and is definitely not appropriate for children. <laughs> I'm clear. So I've given you a moment to get that right. I'm going to tell you what happened. So in the lawsuit, the woman accuses the men, including 
Azaria of raping her for about an hour uh, and a half before she stumbled out of the room bloody and crying. <coughs> the lawsuit um, alleges that the accused former Bills player supplied her with alcohol, led her to a side yard where he orally and vaginally raped her before taking her to a room inside the house where she said a group of men, including two other defendants in the suit, took turns having sex with her from behind. Um, man, so first off, can I just point out the obvious, like, I ain't finna just put it where you was at. You know what I'm saying? Like, that soon. But that's the the adult like grown ass man to me. Like, what is it? What is this? What is this about, man? Um, it's, uh, frustrating because I do believe that maybe, you know, something happened or went down here. It's equally as frustrating to not know the truth per my background. Obviously I've put that, my background is based on finding the truth, you know, I'm pretty shocked by this story to be quite frank. Right, um, but how how damning could this be to the people involved if it's false? So, here's a few things. The young man who is the Im more the more important figure, and I think it's because he is was drafted in the draft. You know what I mean? Um. So he obviously these other guys aren't didn't really aren't really anybody important, you know, at this time that all this went down. Um the lawyers for him, obviously he wouldn't you're not gonna talk to the press with all this going on. You just don't. Your lawyers oh, do yeah, that. No. <laughs> um I always get pissed off when people say, Well, they, they, he's not talking to us because you'll tear him apart. You won't let him answer anything, you'll light him up. We all know how this goes. Innocent or guilty, that's how it goes. Um, I've always been the one to ask my question and then actually wait for the answer personally. Um, right. unless you piss me off and I'm like, look, motherfucker, no, I'm just playing. Um, yeah. everybody got a little Joe dirt in him. Okay. <laughs> um, so it, his lawyer said that he's 100% adamant that he never forcibly raped this young lady or forcibly had sex with her in any type of way or had sexual relations with her while she was intoxicated, whether it be on alcohol or drugs. That's a statement from his lawyer, which is, it, I mean, honestly, if that's what you say, that's what your lawyer going to go say. Like, no, nah, he might like, you might be like, man, I ain't fucked that girl, whether she was fucked up or not. And he's going to go out to the public and say that. <clears throat> and that's why your client, I mean, we just gave a clinical lesson in why your client's not allowed to talk to your lawyer. So anyway, we can, you know, you can take the earmuffs off the kids now, folks. Um, and uh, so based off these heinous crimes, right, that he's accused of. I think that he's been put in a predicament where he has to prove his innocence, which I've always, you know, I've always found that you got to prove that I did something wrong. Okay. It's not the other way. I don't need to prove that I'm innocent. I just, we're supposed to be <clears throat> from a legal perspective. That is, we are supposed to be a country that, um, is guided in the judiciary branch of the government by the presumption of innocence, not guilt, right? For sure. But it don't always work that way, or at least it doesn't oh, look like it works that way. Hell no, it don't work that way. <laughs> we both know that, but I'm just saying. Like, yeah. In the country where that's how it's supposed to be <laughs> is the presumption of innocence, right? And that your accuser has the wholehearted duty to without a reasonable doubt prove your guilt and if there's even the slightest amount of reasonable doubt or doubt in the innocence of someone or guilt of someone if there's even the slightest amount of doubt in their guilt then you cannot convict that person and sleep at night and if you do you are part of the problem i gotta think that if this guy wasn't a bills player bro he'd be taken to the cleaners to be honest with you Oh, you know, come on now. We both went through the court system in one way or another. Look, I do believe something happened to this girl. You don't stumble out of a room fucking crying and bleeding for no reason, okay? Let's be honest. <coughs> oh, oh yeah, with a without a doubt. I don't I don't, you know, doubt that something happened to her for sure, but just let it out, girl. Just let it out. 
I, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> get it out and get it in. Yay! Yeah, token on some of that wake and bake America. Oh, I hate you. I want to smoke this so bad. I, I love you and hate you at the same time. It's it's a complicated relationship right. at this point. Until I get to smoke that weed, it's complicated, okay? <laughs> Uh, I'm smoking on some Kim cake, which is Kim dog and a wedding cake. It's a hella indica 21.37%. Not bad. What are you going to do when you get this then? I'm going to smoke the shit out of it. Like I do everything. <laughs> it's, what do you it's think? 26, eight. Oh! <laughs> 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 That's what we're going to say. 0. 0.07 CBD. I don't. Oh, and you got a little CBD in there too. Yeah, on, tiny a little bit. <laughs> See, so for me, I'm like, yeah, that's dope. That's good weed because it's over 25 percent, and you were able to horn swoggle a little CBD in there. I'm proud of you. We're gonna talk about that in the next show, but in this show, I do want to talk about something that's equally as important. We're gonna move on from this uh case and I, i'll tell you guys that i think that me and the boys on blunt football talk will have lots to say about this coming this fall i i just i got a feeling about that um that it's gonna be that way you know what i mean yeah um, such such a great athlete that's gonna affect my fantasy football honestly he he actually beat out the pro that was there in his position we're talking about the buffalo's punter who doesn't have to punt a whole lot usually right and then um and then that 84 yard punt, I mean, he was really on his way to start. And if it and if it all was just his name getting thrown in there because he was the most famous person, and then you gotta wonder, like, did she know that or was she told that because she knew that they were San Diego State football players? So that it was like, well, then we're gonna say whoop de woo was there. Or like, how did it get to this? Because in my opinion, he he had to have bumped into her or something. She had to have known who he was. Wait a minute. Duh. She, she could have been just a fan, just a fangirl. Duh. Right. You never know. But either way, um, I think that there's a two. I think there's that's a double edged sword. What is an underage high school kid doing out at a college party like that? Like like and, and, and trust me, the I would same ever, thing all of us were doing. <laughs> well, hold on. Before anyone dare try to say I would ever victim shame, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. That would never happen. What I'm saying is, is, is that as a father, the first thing I'm doing is flipping the fuck out because why are you out at a college party? Not at you, but just at that part of the situation. Right. Um, my daughter one time went to, um, uh, it was something like that, like, and got dropped off and, uh, her ride left her at a college party, bro. I flipped the fuck out. Right. I hear my you. daughter's like six, man, five, nine, five, ten, five, eleven, right? Don't. She's like, like you oh. and I both know that don't mean nothing. Ooh. No, that don't. <clears throat> um, but like I said, uh, it just, I mean, she looked like a grown woman and she was in high school. You know what I mean? Scary shit. And of course, the people who dropped her off, I was like, how the f could you just drop her off? You're supposed to stay with. Let me just tell you, some people got the business because I am a real dad. Shoot. That's right. Um, so let's move forward from that one into a category that I think you and I really do enjoy quite greatly. Um, and of course I think the audience will too. As soon as I tell you guys, that we're going to be talking about shrooms. Like what's the big deal, man? There's shrooms. Oh, it is There's a shroom time. Oh, hello, Simon. Great friend of mine. We go back, we go way back like faux flats on a Cadillac. But when we talk about psilocybin, my friend, um, we're talking about, of course, shrooms. We're talking about, well, could it benefit you? Well, yeah, but people still tripping on them, right? Not, that's not a pun. That was on purpose, but still not on purpose. Um, Brain vacation. No, people are literally tripping over shrooms instead of on them like they should be. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Yes, my weak dad notes here, buddy. I'll be around here all night. Please tip your waitress, thank you. No, um, so we've seen clinical trials. We've shown that a couple of doses of psilocybin can, um, in a in a therapeutic setting, can you know really help with a lot of <clears throat> long-lasting trauma and issues. Um, we've seen 
uh, things like uh, PTSD treated with uh, low doses of micro doses of shroom, anxiety, uh, anorexia, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, and various other forms of substance abuse actually have been cured with shrooms as well. Right. Because just like cannabis at the right level, it has shown to be able to help control, hinder all types of symptoms and problems. I know cannabis level for me is top. Whatever the top is, that's where I'm at. <laughs> right. <laughs> all like, day, every. I'm high dose. I'm a high dose patient. Get it? High dose. What about edibles? What's your milligram cut off at? for edibles i'm supposed to measure that oh shit <laughs> no i just honestly dude i usually eat um so i take keef i decarboxyl you know that's my favorite way to do it is to just you know basically sift my flour i'm already smoking on anyway until i get enough keef and then i take the keef and i decarbox and then i usually will add it to food just because even frozen like i add it to like i'll, dude, I'll just put sprinkle it on my ice cream and eat my ice cream with it that's an edible now you know what i mean so yeah. The dose I do take of that, and I wanted to tell you what it was and how I did it, was a, I usually take a quarter teaspoon of, or is it a tablespoon? No, it's a quarter teaspoon. I usually do a quarter teaspoon of the decarboxylated keef, and then I just, you know, spread it out, sprinkle it over my ice cream, whatever, toss it in my spaghetti I'm eating that night, anything. That's usually what I do. So whatever dose... Keef between collected from weed between anywhere between like 15. I don't actually buy weed that low 17 to like 22, 3% weed Keef, um, whatever that is, that quarter of a teaspoon is the dose that I prefer. And then sometimes if I haven't had like a good night's sleep in a couple nights, I'll take two and off to never, never land off to never, never land. Dun, 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 dun. So, so you're probably shooting at around a hundred milligrams, 125 or so. Oh yeah. I can eat 10 of those gummies or, or 15 of those gummies. Like they ain't shit. All right. Well, I'm not talking about the stuff you buy at the store. <laughs> yeah. A dead store about shit. Don't fuck with me. I got to make my own. Just f that's no knock on store bought stuff. It's just I usually buy mine from award winning cannabis chef and sponsor on this show. She doesn't pay me to say this. I actually we sponsor her. Um, Sam from Sam's Creation, actually. Uh, with Sam, you know, she's a professional, but she's like a professional high dose chef, you know. And so for her, I know that when I go to her, she's either going to tell me to eat a bunch of these things or eat or be careful if you eat more <laughs> eat than half one. of one. Yeah. <laughs> Like when I went to go get the, in the morning, when I went to go get the shroom pop, she was like, "I." She's like, "She's like, you're pretty." She's like, "You're pretty tart." She's like, "You, you, you handle yours well, and you also." I do metabolize my my drugs faster than most people, which is so annoying. People are like, "That's a really cool thing," and I'm like, "No, it's not. It's no, been it on drugs because of it." Yeah, right. Like, that's what happens. <laughs> Ray and Jerry, shout out to Ray and Jerry's. Motherfucker, Ray yeah. checking from Florida because he ain't got his Xbox, so he can't play video games. I don't know why it'd he's be here. Good at, it'd like, be good as long as I'm your corner hookup. Right? Um, but shrooms, you know, when I think about shrooms, I'm always like, what's the big fucking deal, man? Like, okay, so you could have your argument on acid that acid is um, when taken outside of a clinical trial setting, acid is made with chemicals, right? So, we, you know, like I'm not against acid. Uh, I always do prefer shrooms, but let's just say that if you roll up on me with an RC car and 10 hits of acid on it, I'm going to fucking take some of them. Um, fucking oh, take right. some. <laughs> but I'm just not a big fan of, of chemicals, right? Um, but I do like acid. So before I, I just wanted a full disclosure here. I love acid. I fucking love acid, but I'm not a big chemical guy. That's just one of the ones that I am like less, you know, pissy. Restrictive on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I like coffee because it's a natural upper, not meth, right? I like <laughs> I like weed, not whatever's bad that they try to make like weed. Oh, painkillers. Cigarettes. <laughs> cigarettes, painkillers. Well, I you know, I don't I don't knock cigarettes smoking. I'm just I'm over it. I don't do that anymore. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends. Ray actually who's on the video right now is one that smokes cigarettes. I have a lot of friends that smoke cigarettes. I just personally quit smoking. Uh, it was uh, back in 2018, the winter of 2018, going into 2019. It was a year before yeah. COVID, when I got the, um, the uh, <laughs> when I got the uh, the uh, uh, pneumonia. 
I got pneumonia, dude, and it, it oh man, I feel like I was getting sucked your ass, didn't it? Oh yeah, when people started talking about COVID, I was like, stop being a little bitch. It's just pneumonia, and then I, then they started dying. And I was like, never mind. You you're not being a bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I that wrong. It, it it's pneumonia on steroids. Pneumonia with an elephant standing on your chest, from what I understand. So I'm like, no, nah, pneumonia by itself was like an elephant standing on my chest. So if you'd like to put a second one, fuck you. <laughs> right. Good. So with shrooms, though, I've seen a lot of military personnel through the acts of psychedelics like acid, shrooms, um, you know, psilocybin, obviously the clinical name of the, of the actual active drug in the mushroom. Um, and then, of course, ayahuasca. Uh, and uh, DMT is another one. Peyote, um, um, even uh, Molly, you know. Oh, that's wait, that that no, that's MDMA. Uh, but even Molly being used to treat things like depression and other things like clinical issues, and some of those are also chemically based drugs or or, or chemically bound drugs as they're they're created, you know. And I'm not against them either. I will tell you, though, just about every drug that we make, including acid via psilocybin, right, you can get just about every. So if you're a bit more of a naturalist, right, like I always like to give that positive good vibe out that if you're more of a naturalist, I do want to tell you that you do have access to medicine that's not chemically derived. I'm just not against certain psychedelics that are that are chemically derived, because I think that um, under you know on it what i call honest doses of lsd so like i'm not going to take 300 hits i can't do that i really do only take like two or three tabs bro I'm, I'm a lightweight and i usually take one and then like another one like an hour later half hour later and then when i start feeling myself that's when i usually take one thinking it's two or two thinking it's one i'm not sure by right. then I don't I it's mean, the I don't roller coaster know. effect and you've seen me on like a quarter ounce of shrooms, bro. I was fucking seeing tomorrow. Right. <laughs> it was cool. Um, it wasn't cool when I blew up Cammy's Snapchat, though. She still, you know, she still doesn't let that go. I still hear about that oh, shit. I'm surprised you still do. No, I'm not surprised I still do because Cammy is like her mom. She knows how to hold a grudge. <laughs> and, and she's a woman. Okay, see. I'm not going to scream that because her office is next to the studio I'm recording in. And I'm they smart. Forget, they forget nothing, man. No. 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 Neither do I, though. So it's fair. I mean, it is fair hunting ground, okay? But hey, we, want, we got to give props to Oregon. Recently, they finally uh, started legislation to open safe microdosing clinics for psilocybin. You know, Oregon is so progressive on their, um, like, natural medicine. You know, I, I understand there's, I'm not talking about politics. I know you say the word progressive, or it's like, oh, my God, lip talk. No, no. I'm just talking about progressive-minded, meaning moving the bar forward, moving society forward from where it is now on natural medicine and things like pot and psilocybin. That's what I mean yeah. by that. Better alternatives to these chemically compounded pills that they come up with that say oh yeah this will fix you yeah the garbage from the pill mill man i mean it's part of the game too it's part of how they keep you hooked all dopey mcdopin as i like to say um let's do this uh so let's talk about some of the benefits of psilocybin um obviously people ask the big question you know are shrooms good for you and i think that um, I think that you have to understand that these are the kind of, when you talk about psychedelics, these are drugs that can increase the, uh, neuronal growth so they can increase what's like the branching of, you know, the brains like neurons and stuff. Um, and they can increase synapsis that's called neuroplasticity and I guess these are, um, so basically, it's different from new genesis, which is basically the development of new brain cells. So, you know, when people say, do an acid make sure you grow more brain cells. No, it does not. It actually helps things like connect and work together. You know what I mean? I think that's a better way to describe that. What it does is, in layman's terms, it assists your neurological transport system in your brain. 
Yeah, I think that it's going to, it really helps grow like new circuits um, and new connectivities in the brain. Right. Which, it makes uh, other connections. Uh, it basically opens closed roads in your brain. Yeah, right. That, in left brain. Right, that you couldn't send neuron signals down before. And now all of a sudden that you've taken this, it opens that doorway up. One thing that I will tell you that it's a side effect of psilocybin that I find fascinating and also quite great is that you sort of like put your brain, um, let's it's like a snow globe and you, you see things where the snow is just settled on the ground and it's all normal and ugly. And when you do psilocybin, it's like shaking up that snow globe and you just, you're like, oh my God, it's snowing. It's so pretty out. Yay. You just see things in such a positive way. Um, you start to lay down positive circuits through neuroplasticity is what the doctor that I was reading his stuff on it. So he's essentially saying that it's a double whammy with psilocybin because you're increasing SSRIs, also increasing neuroplasticity and it's a fact that science has known for some time, actually. But in 2022, obviously after all of our griping, right, and, and the fake tests that were done in the 70s to piss, piss on anything good, a double-blind phase two randomized controlled, controlled trial comparing psilocybin to um, the different types of things like RSI and other stuff and checking like... Um, electro you know transmission and neuron transmission to the brain things like that um they found that basically psilocybin um sparked like sort of magic in the brain if you would right but people who didn't do psilocybin didn't spark that magic didn't have that 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 you know that positivity that fascination you know so what are they, are they putting these people in like mris while they're on psilocybin uh dun, 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 randomized control trial click here hold on let me see what it says for what it was increased sometimes, yeah, sometimes they'll tell you what type of study exactly it was, it was depression it was for depression just for the so psilocybin therapy for anti-depression was the abstract um, uh, deal. It looks like, oh, wow, man, this thing's been published for a while. It's got 66 citations. That's like a good thing. That's saying like other people have signed off on this. Other scientists, yeah. Other scientists have said, yeah, yeah, no, we, 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 we've we read your case study and we... We concur. <laughs> concur that what you're stating is, is true um, based off of the science. But anyway, so they did a placebo study. Um, and what they did find was that people showed no showed the same depression, no new no new reaction, the same you know the same, and the people who got the psilocybin were more positive. They saw things in a more positive way, and I'm like, well, that's how I feel when I trip balls too, buddy. I'm just gonna be honest here. Like, if we're calling a duck a duck, <laughs> if you're happy, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, clap clap. If you're on shrooms and you know it, clap your hands, clap clap. If it's raining outside, but you're really, really high, then you should clap three times. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. We've got to decriminalize in parts of Michigan. We need to work on the rest of it. And Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris. I, I really enjoy talking psychedelics with you because it never uh, – it always pains me to have to bring up the Snapchat story that it still never needs to let go. Um, but it also – makes me laugh because you were sitting right next to me while I was doing it the whole time. <laughs> um, you wouldn't let me get the phone out of your hand. You kept running away. Yeah. I'm a fast little bastard on shrooms, bro. I really am. You're, I'm hard to catch. I know yeah. you are. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just like, <laughs> all right. So, um, right. I'm like speedy Gonzalez, more speedy Gonzalez, less leprechaun. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> Taking uh, psilis, uh, psychedelics, um, it doesn't work for everyone. Um, that was something that Dr. Johnson did stress in the study and when he was interviewed, right? Um, so I did want to point that out that um, he said, but it did work really well. It, uh, uh, he said, but when it works, it 
it, it works really, really well. You know what I mean? Like that's was the one thing he was like, Oh my God, it's a cure for PTSD and depression for the people that it does really work in. And it's changing their lives. It's changing the way their brain automatically was hardwired to react to those instances, triggers of anxiety, um, you know, everything, drug addiction, all kinds of stuff. So very fascinating where psilocybin and the work that's being done. And I really, I really was appreciative to get to read this uh, interview with Dr. Johnson. Uh, Chris, it is about that time, um, but I'll tell you what, uh, you should probably check your phone if you're happy and you know I check your phone. Not literally, but after we end the show, because right. I'll tell you like what's, the, what's good in the hood. Um, there we go. Now you know. But so anyway, so we got to get out of here. Um, if you're getting to catch this show... Uh, live. That's awesome. I think it's great for us to have that conversation, that adult conversation about psilocybin. Um, if you're getting to hear this show later on down the road, I encourage you that you don't have to agree with us. This is two birds in one stoner. We're killing two stories with one smoked out guy and some friends. And um, I just want to remind you guys that you don't always have to agree with us, but you know, kind of listen because here's the thing is if you want to come on this show info at wake the letter in bake america show that's info at wake the letter in bake america show please uh uh send in a request to come on the show uh my show for two birds and one stone is an open guest format here on wake and bake america radio which means we have subjects we have stories we have things we're going to cover and talk about that are going to touch your fillers but at the same time um we also podcast P you should join the next conversation. We're going to be, we're going to be getting into it in the next one. And, uh, but you should come on the server with Chris, right? Chris. Yeah. See, Chris, you're supposed to co-sign it. That's why this guy's been with me for almost a decade. Cause he I, just knows what to do. I, yep. I try. <laughs> on me afterwards. You're so full of shit, Trey, but you know what he says on air. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, all jokes aside, um, we're going to get out of here. Um, if you would like to catch this show and all our other great shows, just check out Wake and Bake, Wake the Letter N, Bake, Wake and Bake America Radio on all your favorite podcast servers. That's Wake the Letter N, Bake America. It's Wake Dash N Dash Bake. Don't forget those dashes, baby. Wake Dash N Dash Bake America Show. I mean, radio. Sorry, radio. Huh, won't have it. Um, definitely check us out. Get in where we fit in because we have having fun on the show. And we want you here with us, man. We want you hanging out with us and enjoying the show. Don't forget to check out Jamie over at Rebel Hair Art Studio One Salon, North Academy Boulevard. Check out Rebel Hair Art on Instagram. You know. And, of course, you know Sam's Creations. That's Sam's with a Z. Creations with a Z. Check them out. Check them out. We're going to get out of here. We'll be back for another show, though. I, won't we, Chris? We'll be back for another show. We'll yeah, be we'll be here. Hi, Chris. It's good enough. Ha! It's time. Now. it's time for two birds and one stoner with me, Mr. Trey. That feel-good show to get you going. I woke up so motivated, so motivated. We're not in a position where we should agree. This isn't an easy subject, and that's okay around here. You see, I got all my game from the streets of California. Young nigga. I'm not questioning anybody's intelligence. I think we're past that. I'm now questioning the ethics of the situation. So what uh, we smoke me. We're just having fun. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I had to hang up on that guy. He just said he used weed that wasn't decarboxylated to cook. I can't do you today. Yeah, I'm on, they said. You could ask yourself an insane question. What if I'm not on any side and I just want the truth? His gift is a curse. Forget the earth. He's got the earth to so pull his dick from the dirt and fuck the whole universe. I'm not afraid. Maybe we can have a debate over what successful is, but I can tell you one thing. I know I was meant to do this, and no one's going to argue that. He said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Success. Success.